Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to enhance our ability uh, functionality, and we will be doing that by adding animations. We will add animations so that we both have something visual to represent what we're actually doing, but also to uh, hook in some functionality for the abilities to respond to. Now, in preparation of this, I have created a compressed file folder. I will have a link in the description down below where you can get this folder. It will contain all the animations that I will be using in uh, in, in the ability system here uh, to show off how, how we will be making use of the animations for our abilities. If you want to, you can just use your own abilities if you want to. Uh, you will, however, might run into issues if I'm like referencing a specific animation and you're running something else, you might have trouble knowing which one I'm referring to in that case, because I might be doing some different things with different animations. But again, completely up to you if you want to run your own animations uh, to play around with. Anyway, what this will be looking like is essentially like this. We will be needing a folder first, so we'll just create an animation folder here for us, where we can store this stuff. Call it animations, and we'll go in there. And the folder will look something like this. You'll have a create an RPG animation zip. And if you extract the files inside of that, you'll get all of these files essentially. And what you want to do now is just uh, mark all of them and drag them into the folder we have for animations essentially. Now we will be presented with this screen and these animations are meant to be used for our mannequin. And in case you wanted to make your own animations, I have a tutorial on how you can import Mixamo animations. I will put a link for that as well. Um, if you want to make use of completely different animations, since if you're not aware, Mixamo is a library of animations and some characters and also some rigging functionality and other fun stuff. But generally, th using the animations is the, the reason you go to Mixamo to have some free placeholder animations, if nothing else. And using that um, tutorial, you should be able to get other animations if you want to make use of that instead of the ones I've included in the pack here. What we will be doing is choosing our uh, mannequin, which we named main mannequin. And then we want to make sure that we have some certain settings marked properly. We want to have import mesh. Let's make some space here so we can read the actual texts. Import meshes into bone hierarchy. We want to have this one checked. Uh, use default sample rate. We want to have this one checked as well. Import custom attributes. We want to have unchecked. And we want to import bone tracks having checked. In addition to this, we want to have delete existing morph target curves unchecked and do not import curves with only zero values unchecked as well. And the reason for this is that these animations have been prepared using a third party program to keep track of certain uh, values um, when it comes to things like root animation and such. And uh, these are the settings that that third party program will uh, want you to have. I will uh, provide a link down to that uh, third-party program as well if you are interested in making use of that. I do not have a tutorial on that subject using that um, program, but I guess I could do that if there's interest for it. Anyway, in addition to that, what you might want to do is uh, Mixamo animations have a tendency of uh, appearing slightly above the ground, and uh, I believe something like minus eight units, meaning eight centimeters in Z axis, usually allows that it uh, applies itself to be sort of uh, flat on the surface. So with these settings, we can now click import all. Then we will control S to save all of this. So these will be the animations that we will be making use of now for this tutorial. Now with our animations in place here, we are going to be setting up a very simple uh, attack animation essentially to have as 
uh, our base for building upon and see how our abilities will develop a, a little bit with more functionality over time. So what we will be doing here is we'll take the, the Greatsword slash 2 uh, UE4 for or UE4. You can rename this if you want to, of course. Uh, and we're essentially just going to be going to create and create any montage over here. And we'll be keeping the name like it has. It's, it's fine like this. Next, we will go to our abilities and we will be creating a child of the BP ability class. And we can just call this BP um, ability slash or something like that. It will be fine. So this being a base class, you see that we have nothing here. Essentially, we remove the actor overlap and the event tick because we don't really need those. And essentially, the only thing that we need here is going to be if we go up here and click show inheritable variables, you'll see that under variables, we have an anim montage available here. This is the one that belongs to the base class. In here, we can just pick our montage that we have now created and put it in here. So now we have done that part. Now our character needs to know about having this ability. So going to our third person character, we open him up. You know that we have the starting abilities array, which determine which abilities we actually have. Now we can start off by making it so that we actually run this regardless of having to press a button, as we tried that out in the last episode. So we'll just do this. So every time when we initialize this character, it's going to be adding uh, those abilities, which makes it a little bit easier for our testing. Our starting abilities, however, we only have the BP ability currently set. We can now change that to our ability slash, like so. But our character won't be able to play a montage because we haven't actually set up the animation blueprint for montages yet. So going to our mesh, you can see we have our skeleton mesh over here and we have our third party, third party, third person and in blueprint. Clicking on the magnifier glass will bring us up to it and we can just open that one up. In here, we just want to set up slightly, a very slight little change. In here, we have the event uh, graph. And if you're unfamiliar with the animation blueprints, I do have a uh, tutorial about that as well, which you can look at to get some familiarity with it. Uh, but we're interested in the anim graph now. And in our anim graph, we have our standard default state machine, but we also want to add a default slot. So a slot where we can play an, a montage inside of and we'll have it uh, overwrite whatever pose we're getting from the, the state machine of our movement, essentially. So this one should take precedence, essentially. Uh, going back to our ability, actually our animation, we can make sure that our uh, animation has the default group default slot, which is the slot we just created so that it will be playing in that. And you can see we have a very simple animation for now and it doesn't have a lot of functionality, but that, that's okay. Uh, we know since we have created it here that our, um, let's see here, uh, abilities, actually over here, our starting abilities, we will just be adding one array, one ability. And since we're adding one, it will have the index zero. So what we can do is we can take our ability component and say that on E, we should instead be uh, using an ability for an index. So uh, use ability like so and set the index to be zero. Now remember our blueprint component for abilities we can go and open that one up here. We double click on the BPC abilities and you can see that we are in the usability function now, the one that we're calling. And it will take an index and it will check among the available uh, abilities that we have and it will try to use the blueprint class ability that we have for that slot. So let's see if this works. We can press play and we press the E key and nothing's happening. So that's bad in the sense of functionality, but good because then we can now debug what is going wrong. So a good place to start and check what is going wrong would be probably to set it at the usability in our blueprint component, I would say. So let's put it there and say play and we press the E key. We go in here, we seem to have an index of zero. This array seems to have one ability in it, which is fine. So we're then stepping into the usability. 
Going in over here, we can see that we have it set to automatically true over here, so we're going to the pre-step. Going into the pre-step, we only have a call to the usability, so that's fine and easy so far. We're trying to get the mesh. We get a mesh. Actually, we don't get the mesh. Okay, so going back to our third person character, we have the BPI get mesh uh, interface here properly added, so that's good. So going to our interfaces and right clicking here, we can open in graph. We can see that we do not have anything returning from here. So what we need to do is we need to drag our mesh and hook it up here. And this is why we have an interface so that a, a different characters can return different meshes. They might have multiple meshes inside of them, for example, and things like that. So having the interface here, allowing each character to define which mesh to return, allows us a lot of flexibility. Anyway, let's try this again. And let's actually try and remove the breakpoint and see if that was everything that was missing. So we press the E key again. And we can see that the character actually does an animation. So that's good. We have that part working now. So what's happening is we're getting to the usability over here. It's playing the montage, which is in this case going to be getting the montage of uh, the child, which we're using, which is the slash attack. And once it is completed, it's calling the end ability, which in this case does essentially nothing because we don't have any functionality for this yet. But basic flow of the ability is essentially working, which is good. I think this might be a good place to stop before we start getting into the heavy lifting of uh, the functionality of uh, the ability system, actually. So we'll end here for now, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.